So here's a fun question. Does Venus have a moon? Well, technically the answer is no, but according to this image, it does. And it's called Zuzvi, or is it Zuzv? And though this might seem like some kind of a April Fool's joke, turns out that this is really not. What started as a very silly mistake has now ended up in a new object with a very strange name that is a quasi-moon of Venus. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's talk about Zuzvi. Zuzv. Um, this thing. And what exactly this is, and why this is kind of intriguing. Now, the full story was actually broadcasted on the Radio Lab podcast in the late January of 2024, and it was basically a story from one of the co-hosts, Latif Naser, who discovered this unusual picture in one of the storybooks that his child had. And he actually became really intrigued because I think most of us know that Venus does not have a moon. Yet, in this picture book, it did. And it had a very strange name. Zuzvi. And so he went on a long quest to discover what's actually going on here, which eventually ended up in this actually becoming a real object. And so I guess so let's maybe take a few steps back and talk about the story from the beginning. And here we have to start with the idea of quasi-satellites, or sometimes known as the quasi-moons. Various objects in a solar system that will usually have extremely similar orbital configuration to some kind of a planet. In other words, they'll have one-to-one -one orbital resonance, even though their orbits might not really be the same at all. But in order to be a quasi-satellite, this has to happen over a very long period of time. Here's a very famous example of a quasi-moon of planet Earth. This is the 2016 HO3, also known as Kamo Oailawa, an unusual object we've talked about before, because this seems to be the most stable quasi-moon of planet Earth. And so here, from certain perspectives, it does appear to orbit planet Earth. But it really doesn't. It's actually just orbiting the Sun, forming these very beautiful loops around Earth. And this is, of course, in contrast to a real moon, which is going to be located inside the planet's hill sphere, or essentially be influenced by its gravitational well, and also thus have a very stable orbit. Quasi-moons generally are not expected to have a stable orbit, and will most likely disappear with time. And some of them do have very extreme orbits, with extreme eccentricities and even extreme inclinations. For example, here's the orbit of yet another quasi-moon of planet Earth, known as 2014 OL339. It's extremely eccentric and quite inclined. Yet it is a quasi-moon because it orbits the Sun at exactly 365 days, just like planet Earth. And as of 2024, we know of seven such objects around planet Earth, with this one right here being the most recent. This was discovered in 2023, or just a few months ago from when I'm making this video, and there are quite likely a few more still hiding. But this one is actually still the most intriguing, because it seems to be the most stable, and also because it's currently believed to be a part of our actual moon. It might have been created during some kind of a collision a long time ago, and it's probably just a chunk of the moon now stuck in the quasi-moon orbit. But exactly when this happened is currently unknown. But naturally, Earth is not the only planet that's able to have these quasi-moons. Now, we don't know of any around Mercury or around Mars, but it's generally believed that both Uranus and Neptune could potentially host quite a lot of these for billions of years. They can actually have permanent quasi-moons because of their distance from the Sun and because of the amount of rocks in that particular location. Whereas for Jupiter and Saturn, they can have quasi-moons, but they would not be permanent due to gravitational interaction with either Jupiter or Saturn. For example, for Jupiter, the maximum potential age for a quasi-moon is about 10 million years. Whereas for Saturn, it's even lower, at approximately 100,000 years. Simply because Jupiter is more massive and will actually dislodge any object that comes too close. But what about Venus? Well, as you can probably guess, there is one here as well. 2002 VE68, discovered back in 2002 by the super prolific asteroid researcher Brian Skiff. Actually so prolific that he even has an asteroid named after him. And so anyway, back in 2002, this was a really exciting discovery because it was the first such object discovered in an orbit around a major planet. The object that had exactly the same period as Venus. And so essentially it took one Venerian year to go around the Sun. And this object has been observed nearly 500 times, which allowed astronomers to measure its orbit exceptionally precisely. 
Actually, this is probably one of the most measured asteroids out there. And so, for example, we know that it has a relatively high eccentricity of 0.4 and a relatively high inclination of 9 degrees. But because of its high eccentricity, it also crosses the orbit of Mercury and even planet Earth. And because of that, it's also technically considered to be a potentially hazardous asteroid. But luckily, in the next 10,000 years, it has absolutely no chance of colliding with anything. It's also what's known as an X-type asteroid, basically meaning that it contains a lot of mixed materials with potentially mixed origins. And as you can see from the simulation, it also might be a contact binary. It seems to be longer on one side, at approximately 236 meters, and is very likely made out of two pieces. But it is technically relatively small. And so interestingly, one of the reasons it was even discovered is because back in November of 2002, it made one of the closest approaches to planet Earth. It was approximately 13 times as far away as the moon from planet Earth, or about 0.03 astronomical units. And so because it was so close to us, that's how Brian Schiff was able to discover it. But since that original discovery, for the most part, nobody really talked about it almost at all. Actually, the only few studies in existence about this asteroid are all from 2012, when a team of astronomers discovered three other co-orbitals, or quasi-satellites, that have the same orbit as Venus. And in one of the studies, they do focus on this rock, mostly talking about its orbit and how it's going to change in the next few hundreds of years. With the overall discovery suggesting that it must have stayed in this orbit for at least 7,000 years, but it might be ejected from this orbit in the next 500 years because of the gravitational perturbances from planet Earth. And so other than that, nobody really cared much about this, even though it was an exciting discovery back in 2002. So why talk about it now? Well, it's really because of this unusual illustration in a kid's book. Turns out that the artist who made this, Alex Foster, for some reason displayed this as Zuzvi. And it took him a while to figure out why. And you might have already guessed why. Apparently when he was making the book and had a draft, he accidentally misread his handwriting and accidentally misread 2002 as Zuz. Eventually turning 2002 VE68 into Zuzvi, which then ended up in one of the kid's books and then ended up being part of a discussion on a podcast, which eventually led back to Brian Skiff, the original discoverer, who liked the story so much that he actually proposed this to the International Astronomical Union. And somehow, they liked it too. And they basically approved this, making this the official name for this quasi-moon as of February of 2024 when I'm making this video. And so yeah, pretty crazy story, a pretty funny story, but a story that hopefully taught you a little bit more about quasi-moons how a lot of planets seem to have them, and how some might even be a result of collisions with actual moons, representing a chunk of a surface that escaped because of a collision and is now orbiting the Sun in a very similar orbit to planet Earth, the object you can learn more about in one of the videos in your description. But technically, we're unlikely to see these unusual funny names for asteroids in the near future. The guidelines for naming these asteroids suggest that they have to be named after mythological figures and not someone's bad handwriting. And so this right here is really just a big exception to the rule. I mean, we do have asteroids named after people, living people, including of course Brian Skiff himself, oh, and quite a few YouTubers apparently. I know Fraser Kane has one named after him, Scott Manley, and the violinist Lindsay Sterling, but those cases seem to be kind of unique as well. Also, I think you're no longer allowed to name things after people, and so you're probably not going to be seeing asteroid Anton anytime soon. Although that would be pretty cool, huh? Anyway, I thought it was a pretty cool story, and I just wanted to have a reason to talk about quasi-moons once again. And so officially we now have the object with the strangest name in the solar system, the quasi-moon Zuzvi. Actually, I still have no idea how to pronounce it. Anyway, on that note, once we have some additional discoveries in regards to Earth's quasi-moons, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Or by maybe naming an asteroid after me. Ha 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 ha. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye. Oh hey look, this asteroid even kinda looks like me from a certain angle. Right? <laughs>